Why don't you put it up front? Okay. So let's start recording here. And share. So sharing my screen. So where do we go? So first of all, uh, the prior work that we build on here is work on a CNC torch table. We've done uh, most of the one inch universal axis on a torch table. So you want to take a look at universal axis. Um, and now, of course, simplifying this. to uh, what we learned and, and faster build, easier build, things like, uh, things like, one thing like interior nuts, we're getting rid of like things like interior nut catchers where nuts can spin inside, make everything accessible. Uh, yeah, dark, dark and lovely, can, can we keep the light on? Yeah, I, I would prefer light. light? No. You want dark? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we'll so, <laughs> one inch universal axis prior work so so same as the 5 16 inch the 8 millimeter stuff the concept is the same it's you've got bushings around rods and you've got the motor piece the idler piece the carriage the carriage is what moves so the green parts are the bearing the carriage bearings yep those are 3D printed so here is this is what we're going to be building in oversize so motor piece We've got the carriage, and we've got the idler piece. The idler functions only just to wrap the belt around and catch the rods and attach to the frame. So you can say there's three functions. The carriage uh, provides the, the precision motion around the rods. It's where the belt is attached. It's where your tools are attached. So that's the part that's moving. So once again, three functions more or less. The motor piece, you've got the drive there. You've got the attachment to axis. And once again, you've got the spacing of the rods to be equal. So in all this game, like if we collaborate between the 3D printed parts and say the, the carpented parts, carpentry parts of wood, only thing we have to keep in mind primarily is the rod spacing so that the parts interoperate. If we get that right, you can make wood parts, you can make plastic parts. Uh, here, the, the design, initial design, it looks kind of hairy and complex. Like, look at all those parts. Um, and we've simplified it way over that. Like, first we started with clamshells, and it's like the, all the bolts to put clamshells together. That was just a pain. So you've got, say, like the idler piece, you know, or, two clamshells, you got four bolts, four nuts, 12 pieces, well, nine pieces, 10 pieces right there. Well, reduce that to one piece, which is just one full full shell. So that's some of the initial learnings. We thought this would be cool because then you have more flexibility in, t in terms of th taking things apart. But in practice, I don't know, that wasn't... Take it apart, it's together. Yeah, like if you're on an axis, it's, you might as well, you don't really take off one part, you probably take off both parts if you're modifying something. So that wasn't highly useful. But the number of parts is remarkably small, that's all. So concept is very simple. You got a motor, you got a rod, you've got some bolts. Um, let's go through this so we understand this, how the system works. So we still have a motor, this is the small ones, but we're going to use larger ones. Uh, the ones we use are NEMA 26, NEMA... 24. If you look look online, you can see they're slightly bigger than what we use, we're used to. They have flanges for the bolt holes, and that's if if we're going to make that out of wood, all you need to do is have a hole for the shaft and the correct spacing for the bolt holes. Now that's an industry standard, so you Google NEMA 24 bolt pattern, and you can find that bolt pattern. I'll give you the specific dimensions so you can you can do that. I mean, you can pull it up anywhere off the internet. Um, so that's the kind of motors we have. The documentation right now we started just started the thing which is called large three D printer. 
So working back, I'll paste this into the into the chat box for anyone who wants to get in there because that is our editable doc. And then make sure that's open editable. You can find and edit. Um, so yeah, working doc. We, I mean, we already Ken did some of these new pieces already. Uh, this is this is old. For example, this is your what is that? That's your the carriage. Carriage. Ream it out from the middle. Faster print time. Do that. V2. Good. Less print time. Three hours, 25 minutes. Uh, 0.6 millimeter layer height, 1.2 nozzles. So this is in free cut. Um, so what makes that uh, you said faster printing? I don't know before you said something about the uh, heat. We have uh, 1.2 millimeter nozzles as our standard that we print with because we want to print larger things. Typically the, the hobby printers use 0.4 nozzles. So you get uh, much faster print rates which are go as squared so it should be in theory you, you'd be printing out nine times as fast because of the four compared to point four compared to one point two is threefold factor and it's pi r squared for the area that you're depositing at one time so it's uh, nine times in principle faster uh, we're using still our regular heater block we're not even going to a thing called the super volcano uh, we have that, but let's get this to work first before we add any variables. The goal for now is get the large frame, large axes working, including the lifting of hundreds of pounds on a bed. Talking about the bed's going to be heavy. Now if you're talking about a full print, you talk about a module that's 200 pounds. That's what we do plus the bed, bed weight it might be another hundred pounds how much can these motors do they can do 50 pounds a pop we have 200 pounds out of the box with four motors so um, that's a basic design we start with how are we going to do a bed that size that's rigid and not 200 pounds in and of itself yeah um, Let's get some. To your point, the frame's got to be larger than the bed, so the the, the, the bed itself is what's going to be uh, eight by um, eight by four. But uh, no, the bed is going to be four by four. four. Four feet by four feet. We don't have to go that that far. We can we have we can do that. How do you do a large bed like that? Let's talk about that. That's some weight. Um, but let's, let's let's get to that in a sec. I mean, yeah. you can. I mean, so you you, you want to do uh, reinforced flat plates. So steel plates will be quite warped, but you can make them more straight by welding on thin honeycomb structure on the back. Like for example, on uh, D3D genealogy, we did that where you reinforce it by welding a pattern across so anytime you have a, a weld that's at a right angle you, you get it super straight if you clamp it down with a flat bar lengthwise um, if you look at the 18 inch bed printer like those how do we do the bed inside the the 18 inch bed right here how do you do that bed um, build pictures Um, bed pictures. So that's the bed here. Let's let's take a look at the bed. But what you do is, uh, well, that's the large steel. But what we do is then weld this. That's how you reinforce it on the inside. And therefore, you can get a relatively lightweight structure. Now here we can use our halogen heaters, so that's an improvement. We used the filled it with foam and ran the nichrome heaters, which are, are much harder than the uh, halogens. So we can do something like this. Uh, this was only 18 inches. We have one 
Uh, we have a plate that's three by three feet. If we want to go four by four, we'd have to cut that out of the large sheet we have. Uh, just one question, not being pro at welding or anything. D does one have to be careful of warpage or something? From well, here's the points. Uh, so what you do here is when you when these are you hold down these bars which are stock material that's two by one sixteenth lightweight stock that might even be like yeah that's one sixteenth when you hold it down mm -hmm. really flat that edge is quite straight like to within like yeah. a millimeter or so so you'll have a millimeter flatness across the whole thing as long as you do that like once you're connected cool just the tack welds do it like if you just burned burned a lot into this yeah you, i mean you'd start warping all this. this is sheet steel so you can turn down your voltage right yeah you can turn it down um but if you get that entire thing hot it'll, i mean it'll all warp on you so you want to just weld it this style where you tack just got welded. dots yeah. uh, that's plenty strong for what we want to do the reason why the bed is so thick, I mean, is that for insulation? Yeah. The reason for that is to keep structural integrity. Mm -hmm. And the second one is to insulate it so you're using about 30% less power with an unheated chamber. So we took some data and that saves you about 30% energy on a heat bed, which if you're in production, that matters for numbers and cost of electricity. If you're running a farm, that's got you know, a bunch of these and running 24-7. Um, now, what's a, uh, what are other ways to do it? Uh, how about tile? 4x4 four four tile or 2x2 two two tile? Super flat. Ceramic tile. Yeah, like for flooring. Yeah. That's a good idea. So we can put the, the heaters. And do that it's heavier. on the same substrate? Ah, you could put it right on this. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is the substrate. That would yeah. be a good idea. Um, we're going to use this. Uh, we're going to so use the same frame. So. Okay, so what kind of insulation is going to be able to take that extra um, heat? Uh, not insulation. You you design it so that the heat dissipates, and you got a water water cooling. Okay. You'd have to have water cooling in that place. Okay. Uh, so. We're going to, like this frame, it's going to be our multi-purpose pro prototyping frame, and we can use it for the subsequent CNC experiments. Like, for example, the MIG head, we just replace the head and put on a torch head. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, if you want to do production, like hour-long prints, yeah, you'd have to have water running on that, because uh, your entire printer would have a meltdown after an hour or so of heating up. It's You see how hot that stuff is. So... That's the bed style. Um, that's the technique. <coughs> if we talk about large beds, here those those individual squares are like nine inches. So if we do like every nine on center, that's pretty good stability. It's like having an eight by eight bed, some of it like on a D three D Pro, the the printer other printer we have yeah like every eight inches to twelve inches probably like less than twelve like eight eight to nine is about the right number so it doesn't so you have complete stability like in terms of flatness and the way those are intersecting there just notched out one into the other so they intersect like that you can grind them down like that um, that's the bet but the design is like one of the main design considerations would be like how much you got to start thinking okay are, are, how are my motors going to do for lifting that bed that i mean that's it's a challenge right um so that's why you have counterweights this. yeah like on that we have counterweight so we should do counterweight too if we have um if we have 200 pound lift capacity and our bed is under 100 we could do it we could just tested without it and then maybe add those later but we wouldn't be able to do our full prints on that you'd have to add those counterweights <coughs> later and it's a pretty simple mechanism it's uh, uh we would probably use like what's it called uh, what's like this tent wire or what's it called the uh, that strong wire paracord paracord works well you want to have bearings around that to so the paracord would would uh, slide well um but one of the main limits the design of bed weight 
Um, so, I mean, each motor does 50 pounds uh, force. We can calculate that from the torque of the motor and the diameter of the pulley. The pulley is still one half inch diameter, so we're using the same as on the 3D printers. But that turns out to be 50 pounds with the with the motors we use. Um, so the kind, yeah. I mean, is it pretty easy just to add in a few more in series? Yeah. Yeah. Other ramps. Yeah, but that's so much. It's easy, but it's all time, right? Yeah. So in three days. Uh, four is a good number. You can go hi higher, um, but then it becomes like so much. Uh, it gets kind of too much at that point. I mean, four is perfectly workable. <coughs> you know. Um, using the ramps for or? Yeah. Okay, that's possible. <laughs> yeah, with the with the universal controller. Okay. So universal controller for control with external stepper drivers, the little drivers are not going to do it. Okay. We're going to use external ones. Um, universal controller. What's that look like? Let's put a link on that so you can study how that was done there. So anything with blue outline means a hyperlink. So you can click on that. Um, then the hyperlink pops up. Uh, Universal controller, that's another page. So we build up on this. Universal axis here, so that's that's a critical link. Let's let's go over the the pieces and then we so we we are clear about how this thing works. So just studying the the simple universal axis does it. We know we have a motor, we have a pulley. We've done it. You guys have done it. Uh, you got a set screw and a pulley. That's it. I mean, not much to it. It's larger larger shank on the motor. It's now I think eight millimeters. So here it's like five. We go to eight. The bearings. Now we get go into steel, a uh, uh, brass, bronze, brass bushings. That's all McMaster car. So if you go to McMaster, you can get the uh, one inch. Uh, so you would look for one inch <coughs> br bronze. Bushing, you get stuff like this. Um, these are like, yeah. There's all kinds, of, all kinds of types. Oil embedded sleeve bearings. They're kind of self lubricated. That's what we get. You get get them in all kinds of sizes, and one inch is very common. So this kind of a thing. Well, let's get a specific link to this, and it's. And it's only, what are we doing? We're doing one and a half inches long, I believe. Uh, no, not not like that. You you have different wall thicknesses. So what you want to search for here is inch, and then for shaft diameter one, and then you have different wall thickness. We, we're just using one eighth wall thickness, so it's kind of uh, thin. One inch shaft, so this one we use is one and a quarter OD, and it's this one I believe here, which is one and a half inches long. So you go to product detail, it looks like that. It's the cat is here, um, so it's 1.5 inches. So therefore, the carriage has to be a minimum of three inches to hold these. Oh. You put two parts yeah. It has a flange, I guess. No flange. No flange. We've got a bunch of these, and that's that's industrial grade. That's going to be very strong. It's metal, so that's the equivalent of the plastic eight millimeter. What's next? So this is the belt pegs of before. Now we have the belt clamp and the belt cylinders. We need to print new versions of that. So that's printing. So you got your pulley, 
Um, this bearing for the belt, what we can use now is use the 8 millimeter shaft, which is common, which we use elsewhere, like on the universal printer, use it as a shaft for a 3D printed uh, pulley, just for the idler. So you just got to wrap it around. So two bearings on the outside, shaft through it. So if you're doing your wood block, wood block, two bearings, shaft through, 3D printed piece to spin on that. Could we do that with metal instead of wood? Just one brick. Yeah, sure. Yeah, if you want to drill Just metal. Give it a try, perhaps. No. Hmm? You won't, we you don't have the time. Try it out, perhaps. If Time, no. <laughs> no, we don't have the time. In okay. three days, we're going to... We're gonna, okay, gotcha. uh, Let's not. Do it. The, we, okay, so the but psychology here is we got... It's doable, completely doable. doable. Okay. Uh, if you want to go more industrial grade and, and have, have a print that will be more appropriate for the, uh, say, the MIG, MIG welder printer, yeah. totally. which uh, mm. just the radiation would probably melt down your parts after some... So you've got to shield them. So, met, uh, so metal would make a lot of sense. But, like right now, three days is extreme. We, we don't have time to mess with stuff. We'll be glad to uh, finish everything, right? And we've got seven axes, like eight feet. The rods are like, you carried the rods. How heavy is one rod? Two of those, um, one rod, almost one rod is used for one Z axis. That's heavy, right? Definitely. It's heavy stuff. So let's not no room for like anything outside of mission critical. We're using one inch rod, right? Not yeah, one inch. Huge. Okay. Now we also got hollow rod, so we it's a uh, we did get it from uh, McMaster Car hollow stuff, which is uh, one inch o OD, and then it's one eighth inch wall. So we can use that for the the X and Y to make that part light. Um, for the Z axis, those rods only come like up to six foot length. So what we can't do Z with it. I would like to do it because the, I mean these rods are getting heavy. I mean talking about uh, nine feet. Um, what is it like over a hundred pounds for just for the rod? I mean, so so the 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 constraint on the three D printed parts is just strong enough so you can uh, hold the weight. I mean it's literally the weight. Now you're gonna have the heavy bed, but you have four of the Z's, <coughs> and you you kind of need them, um, but. That would be the heavy part. What I would suggest, actually, we when we build the structure, we can hang the the X Y gantry at a comfortable height. Because actually, like, if you hang it uh, above your head, that's actually not comfortable. We should just start start it like at six feet, whatever. We can mount it higher later because the system will be completely remountable to a higher position. But just for comfortable working height, uh, let's like we'll build a large frame, but let's work comfortably so we don't have to like go up on ladders to actually mount the axes and stuff like that just for ergonomics and getting this thing done because you can easily hang it up later in fact it would be good to prototype it at comfortable level so we can move it because I mean we'll be messing around and getting tired and stuff so um, doing that okay equivalent of the so you need four bolts for the motor now the motors are flanged in this case if you go to to this so it's not um, so you can go all the way through the bolt length doesn't matter which is a good thing so you can use any kind of bolt uh, length like you don't have to have a very precise bolt length in a, in here in a universal axis those are very precise length they're 25 millimeter bolts because we're going right through the plastic and threading in so that's that um, then you've got three pieces still the the motor motor piece, idler piece, and carriage piece, and a belt. The belt is wider, it's 15 millimeters now. So instead of eight, what is it? No, it's six. Instead of six, we've got 15. But other than that, same concept, just supersized. Um, we did this, that's that's the kind of topology we got on a, this is this is like not, not good enough, like the, the rods bend enough that, um, you can do this, but very marginally, so you don't get uh, good quality out of this. Uh, you can hardly lift, like we co actually couldn't lift the bed properly, like it started skipping with the uh, smaller motors. Now maybe if you want to do this and then use heavier rods, the thing that <coughs> started bending on you was the, the actual x-axis. I mean four feet wide just with the, yeah it just starts to bend, which does work because of bed leveling, 
that corrects it, the Z height, bad levels, it corrects it for you, but you have to print, like, just, you, know, you won't get the high performance of going fast and stuff like that. It, um, you can't see your example. Okay. Am I sharing? I'm still sharing what locked up there. Maybe stop sharing and start sharing again. There we go. Um, so in this configuration, this is what we're doing, this supersized one inch rods. So four Z axes, motors on top um, or bottom. Now since uh, I would actually maybe mount them on the bottom because you got all the wiring to go up there. Maybe just mount them right on the bottom so you have shorter wiring. The universal controller is the other part. But yeah, think about this. We actually have that print surface there. We can reuse it if we like. That's It's three by three. It's sizable. Uh, that would actually be a cool thing. I mean, we can go to larger if we want, but I mean, I, I'd be happy with getting this to work. And, um, and to confirm, when you were talking about the, uh, you know, weight uh, specifications or requirements, um, if, if the, each of these molars is limited to 50 pounds, I don't know how much the rods you know, support, but does that mean that the part has to be limited to, to 50 pounds or is there additional weight distribution of, of some sort or you're you always limited to like one, one axis uh, and one motor? So you got four of them, so you're limited to 200 pounds total lift ability. So you have so to use counterweights. Almost in rod. I mean. We're gonna use hollow rods for the, so the Z rods don't count because you're not lifting the Z rods at all. Oh, okay. What counts is the, Y rods <coughs> only, and th for that we have hollow rod, which helps. So that hollow rod may be like, I don't know, maybe like 30 pounds, 20 pounds. So we still have, like if we do a lightweight bed like this, we can still get it to work um, without counterbalance, very likely. Because 200 pounds, that's considerable. Um, that bed there, it's it's about 45 pounds without the reinforce the honeycomb on the back, but the honeycomb on the back could be light. That could be like five pounds or ten pounds, um, and we could put something lightweight like like a mesh on the bottom, and that's full steel. What we want to do is hold a little bit of insulation and the lamps. Mm -hmm. So we should use probably like four lamps four to eight lamps, we could use eight even, for two thousand, eight is only uh, two thousand watts, one thousand watts would be plenty to heat this up, because they, they actually work really well, they're actually much more efficient than other means, because they are radiant as opposed to conductive heat transfer, which is faster and more effective in this case. On that note, uh, not to uh, derail too much, but in the future if you did want to have a 3D, uh, I'm sorry, a um, a metal printing head. Is there a way to use, you know, higher wattage um, or just multiple uh, halogen lamps to uh, to melt metal um, as well? No, halogens go only to like what 400 watts metal. Metal is 1,100 to start. I, I thought there was a. Oh, it depends what metal. You you have low temperature metals that melt at uh, 200 or 300. Aren't this, I thought there was some like higher uh, wattage but those are not halogen, high uh, and, the, and even halide lamps, I guess, that could do like up to 2,000 uh, Fahrenheit and stuff like that. I don't know. Uh, that would be news to me. Um, that might be the filament temperature, but the radiant energy temperature, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's true. The only way I know that you can do it is for melting metal is induction. Um, not, not photons, but electromagnetic radiation. Uh, I don't know what's the t limit of of a photon. Uh, that's well, you are talking about laser. Um, <laughs> lasers, yes, definitely melt metal, but I'm not sure how much a halogen gets. But yeah, I can't look it up right now. Yeah. 
that's int that would be interesting, but I'm, I haven't heard of it. It doesn't mean it's not possible, but the but, uh, thing you have to pay attention to is heat loss. Like <coughs> if, maybe if you have a very well insulated um, chamber, then you can do it. But then again, if the halogen goes to 2000, when does your glass melt in that? Yeah. You're going to melt the glass before you melt metal. Which part? The halogen is a glass tube. So what's the higher melting temperature, uh, so glass or metal? But the, I was How do you mount the halogens around the nozzle to melt the metal, right? Yeah, the no, that's metal. a different problem they, beyond the scope of this mundane yeah. pedestrian discussion here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, getting back to the weight, I was wondering, uh, the, the printed part also, is that a concern? I mean, oh, yes. Massive, yeah, massive part, right? Yeah, a door module is going to be, or, or a wall module, they're around 100 to 200 pounds. <coughs> if you print a full stack of 2x4s, you're talking about a ton or <coughs> something like that. If you print a 4x4 bed of 2x4s, that's like a ton. So, so yes, that will be a huge issue. You can't do the full bed. You can only do a part of it, or hollow shapes, because the... What's a cubic meter of plastic weigh? What's the density of plastic? It's like one gram per per cubic centimeter. And would would one tend to print like completely solid or or like a honeycomb structure oh, yeah. in the plastic? Or yeah, that's the advantage of three D printing. Yeah. If we do the two by four, do it honeycomb to save material while giving you the full the strength that you need. You yeah. can print it full for full strength. <coughs> uh, but with honeycomb structures, no, you don't you might not need to. You, you can optimize for geometry mm -hmm. for strength to to dimension ratios. Mm -hmm. So plastic is about a gram per <coughs> per cubic centimeter or in other words a ton per cubic meter. Oh we've got more than two cubic meters here, so that's four thousand pounds we could print on this bed. This, we're talking serious stuff here. You're not not going to be able to counterweight that unless you have an extremely precise counterweight system. No, you can't. I mean, the motors are. You got 200 pounds in the motors. You need to. Well, what you can do is gear down. But then the belts. You got to go beyond these belts. They're 50 pounds. Safe working strength. Got to go to chain, no? no chain. Way. Hey, we've or got uh, we've got experience with chain. <laughs> we could do it. <laughs> well, yeah, you could do. For the counter that sure. way it changes while you're... Oh, oh yeah, tanks. look at that. Yeah, okay, so there we've got so a smart idea. Bed. So water tanks that get emptied, and then, yeah, you could possibly, if you design this right. extremely well, you can probably use these motors. Because you got 200 pounds of force, you only have to have enough to have a differential of force to counteract the friction of, of your, your weight. So if you've got less than 200 pounds of friction in a system, yeah, you could, you could do some kind of a counterbalance system, a more funky one beyond the sp scope of this pedestrian discussion. Um, I, I don't know if you, uh, if you, if you Google a uh, halogen bulb heat output, if you get the same thing I do, it'll, uh, it answers the question on the, uh, the bulb in the glass and, uh, and the heat output. Yeah. I don't know if it's freezing again, but it's saying you had a bulb. Do yeah, it. this is the filament. So you have to talk about how that filament. What's the temperature once the once the because the radiation is omnidirectional. So what is the actual temperature? It's generating a, a certain distance away. It's not going to be that that high. So that would be that at the filament. So if you could have a metal very close to that, yeah, you could melt it. But how how does it scale to you know if you got bulbs? I mean, you got to go into the metal too, by conduction. Uh, I don't know. Maybe there's some geometry where you can. <laughs> Space the interestingly, within a, a metal, uh, the table of metal would have to not melt. To your point, you have to go. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. And 500 degrees on the. Uh, the so yeah, the bulb is only that. But that's not true because the radiation from the metal will heat that bulb up. This is. This is uh, particular wavelengths going out of it. Once you start heating it with the radiating metal, probably melt that thing down. Okay, but let's move on. Um,
So, universal control is what we do. You don't have to worry about it for <coughs> when we talk about it tomorrow. But it's the same thing we've built. Uh, all you're doing on the universal controller is replacing the so it's still the same RAM system hacking it to um, do this so you've got this is what you've seen before now instead of you take off the little stepper drivers and, ex and put them connect them to these larger external stepper drivers which are called TB yeah. There's these external stepper drivers. It's internet speed, but external stepper drivers, which you, which you use instead, using the same kind of control. We don't have to worry about it right now. Uh, we'll talk about it tomorrow when we get to a, a structure, structure and axes today. So so there's a lot there. So let's go through what we need uh, between carpentry and and uh, 3D printing. So this kind of thing we can I think we can print as is. Uh, we have to expand well we have to expand the the bearing hull. Uh, what I did do uh, right now just just before this so on uh, we do have some cat here so we, we have these parts and here's some more parts um, for practical purposes this is a template, so I actually uh, drew this up real quick just before. So take a look at this. This is basically the spacing of if you make it out of wood. So basically what I propose is um, Sorry. we get a one team on a... Um, go ahead. I just turned on the gas stove. Someone cooking something? Very dry now. Well. <laughs> Someone's cooking a pot? Yeah, I don't know if it's milk, but it's just a crust left. Okay. Um, that's the sp that's the spacing for uh, the bearings. So if you uh, okay. so the same the center of this is also the spacing for. Uh, Sorry. Spacing for the. Well, we can read the dimension off of that. So uh, let me just read that dimension. So the critical dimension that we have is. I'm going at 3.5 inches right now. I'm actually forgetting about what we did before. Um, it's just I'm not the other window. No, I think it. So there was some server error, and I had to make a choice of what to click, and I guess I clicked the wrong thing. So Ken, what what dimension do we do bef <coughs> between? So so let's talk about logical dimensions <coughs> that <coughs> may make sense. Between the rods, we have enough space for about 3.5 inches. So that's like that. We're limited by the bed size of the six printers we have. What kind of wood stock do you have around this? I would use because um, you gotta have a four by six. Yeah, I'm gonna say, and you gotta have a pretty decent piece of wood for it to not split down the grain and stuff for doing this kind of. Yeah, so use a block, a four, use a four by six, and you yeah, can possibly four, you do have four by six. Yeah, some it's four like by six cutoffs. Yeah, dug for that or whatever the treated four by six stained treated lumber. That would be probably the best, and you can Let's cut it. Like. Yeah, <coughs> uh, so yeah, you gotta can't do it out of two bys really. No. Um, but this kind of makes sense. Now it's a little different than what we have in uh, in the official CAD by Ken. Um, so here's here's what we've got. Uh, it's probably since we're reworking these files, it's probably the easiest. Like for example, this this is uh, Ken drew this up. We can readily pretty much just redo this um, because the spacing of the the size of the the hole is not great. And it's like some weird, like 89.7 millimeters. Let me just try to keep it. Is it freezing again? Um, yeah. The main thing is we got to, like, we don't have this prototype. We're prototyping 
and doing this. So the simplest way to do it is to say, okay, here's an easy understandable dimension. Like I would migrate off the current dimensions of 89 millimeters because it's like it's going to be a pain to measure it. So we can modify this very slightly. It's pretty quick to take a block, poke two holes in it, poke a square in it. That's like five minutes. We can redo that. But what are the critical features of um, the question is what are the critical features of what we need to design here so that it's connectable to one another? And there's an auto paralleling mechanism where it's best to look at on this printer here. Take a look at what we've got here to explain this. But we want to accommodate that so that anyone can build this without high tolerance again. Once again, designed for tolerance. So what we do here is if you observe the bearings on the other side, it's called our auto parallel mechanism. But what's what is this thing doing here? These two bearings. So look at it, study it, tell me what it's doing. Why do I have those two bearings there? Those bearings allow the rods to, to slide in and out. The other side is fixed. Those, those rods are fixed there. So what is going on there? Prevented seizing up is exactly so right. Like flex a little bit. How about the millimeters? Uh, the length of the bearings. So if we build a frame, we're not going to build a perfect frame down to a you know a few thousands that you have like zero bind up. We're designing for counting. It can be off by a quarter on the frame, not a problem. Even a half inch, one inch. If we have the rod, ability of the rod to move in and out, as long as this is straight, we don't care what's happening on the other side. The motion is measured from the end stop, so you still have that, like, it doesn't matter how far out we're there uh, on this, or if this, or if this axis reason. is not parallel to that. Uh, within reason of binding up the actual paralleling mechanism, because yeah. if you have it too far out, you're not even going to be able to slide in and out of those. Yeah but a half an inch, quarter inch, so which means we can build the frame in a second. We can lay it up on a five by 10 table, use, use a five foot, um, yeah, angle, quarter by four angle, quarter by four by four angle. We can lay out on a, on a table and uh, do this little trick of uh, the frame doesn't have to be perfect. So we want to design that into our system, so that's part of the design we have to do. Um, that means, well, here it's an overslung carriage, right? Okay. What we want to do is probably connect it. Uh, we, we can do this kind of a system, but if we if we have, um, well, let's look at the actual pieces to determine. Do we want to go like with the axis like this? What's what's convenient here is that the shooter is comfortable to be mounted on top. However. The extruder tip is not going to reach over the one inch carriages, so we have to underslang the, the carriage. It has to be under, mounted under the, the actual axis. So that's the other difference. We have to make a little platform, um, just connect this to the underside of the carriage, of the actual one inch carriage. So that's what we have to do in this case. Well, let's, let's go to the, the basic geometry here. So, so think about what we need, because we have to think about this. So, we can do yeah so let's explain this let's just spend a minute to explain how we are connecting x and y axes together and in fact we don't need to go into the now how do you mount one to the next for x y for today let's worry about the z's and let's worry about the Y's. We'll, we'll solve how to mount the X. Because the questions are, do we go this way? Do we go this way? Because then we're going to have to put holes into our pieces accordingly. So the question is, what holes, like what mounting points do we have available? And here, I'm showing Well, if you want to look at my screen directly, what 
what I'm showing is we've got this 3.5 inch so right now you can go get a block of wood and make an idler we need six seven so that's a job in itself the idler is the, the piece on the end of the with the little idler thing yeah we can print the pulleys around that go around a uh, the eight millimeter shaft so that the same shafts as on the print the small printers that's what we'll use for an axis and two skate bearings which are what we use in a extruder yeah. mm -hmm. same thing uh, so mount those and do this now the dimensions here are so critical dimensions 3.5 for the centers and 5.5 to the outside so we're just within a printing distance of the bed which is six so 5.5 gives us a little leeway in case we can't reach 6. Some printers may not reach 6. Um, but 5.5 is good. This also allows us enough space on the outside that if we want to mount something to the outside here, like through bolt holes, so what I'm saying in that is And let's not w worry about the details because we can spend all day discussing how to how to mount things to this because uh, you want the carriage pieces to be designed such that you can mount them this way or that way uh, to each other through the motor piece and either piece. Otherwise, how do you how do you do it? The axes already have that built in for the five sixteens. Like, um, for example, if you go through through these two holes, you can attach well that piece or the actual holes on top you can take this piece at this angle actually mount it through these two holes so it's already designed for certain interconnection mechanisms we have to design this in here which is not designed so we don't have to worry about it don't worry about it for today uh, because for the z-axis at least uh, I would say if we get to this man if we could finish the z-axis and the frame today that would be that would be a big milestone so let's let's perhaps talk only about that um, then we worry about uh, the y-axis which is also independent it does not need this consideration until the, the mounting consideration until we get to the x-axis but we know we have a provision here which is we have bolt holes so uh, we can design little bolt holes on the ends here like quarter inch bolt holes here so that if we want to now we can interconnect the other piece through these bolt holes so draw a few of those in here and what's that mean so if you close that so what's that mean well if we expand that Uh, so let's um, okay anyway um, in this picture so I, I did this so imagine this is longer it's uh, gonna be a little longer now you can also imagine if this had holes at the top at exactly the same space then you can connect one to the other so that's the only provision we'll save right now we're gonna say once we need to we'll put in those well for the wood pieces we can put those in later and for the 3d printed pieces um, we'll put them in too. We'll see how much we can get printed because we we have we're competing between uh, making axes, like cutting steel, cutting rods, uh, welding, and actually doing some 3D prints. But the first thing on the 3D prints, we wanted to do like a sample little test file like this, so that we know that the bearing or the rod fits in exactly. We have to fight it, so that that we're gonna just get the the sample prints started. I got an SD card of that, so we can do that. Um, is this also the part that you would suggest to make out of wood or not? Well, we're doing out of wood because we, we want to buy ourselves time. Right, no, I, I understand that, but I just make yeah. sure this, this part. Um, I mean, it would help with the wood making sure everything's lined up if we did have one to use as a template. No, because um, I'm not sure how it helps because uh, you can control the size of the things you're drilling. In 3D printing, what we're trying to make up for is the curve, like the width of the filament thing. So when you print a one inch hole, it's not one inch, it might be 0.95, uh, 
right? So we're testing what exactly we need to set to make it, it. more seamless as opposed to like using a heat gun for everything. Um, so th that little bit of testing is useful. You can also print like whatever, print one and then just drill it out with a one inch bit. Yeah. Uh, well, let's try to do, try to like test, test a few prints, make sure we're doing okay. So the OD of the bearings, um, I don't know if you can do that. I think we have some bits there that are 1.25. We have some Forstner bits. There might be like a 1.25. There's a hole saw that's 1.25. I don't know if we can do that with that, but, um, we know that we can do the idler and motor pieces because that's just one inch bits. Yeah. We can definitely do that, so maybe start on that. And for the motor, the thing that's critical is what's, what's the bolt pattern? So the bolt pattern, yeah, that's really way, way uh, bogged down there. So I would go maybe to NEMA, NEMA 24 motor on the wiki, you probably have um, Oh, um, template, NEMA 24, probably have a diagram of it, let's uh, not see, so um, we want to look for the exact spacing, NEMA 24 bolt pattern, I mean, do I need to pull it out? Ben, what's that? Sorry. Can you Google this thing? It's it's a very specific dimension, and it's like right. Uh, where did it go? I mean, if we have a. There it is. It's a. An, ex an extension too. We can just like. Um, yeah. Um. Just put the actual motor on and mark it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just use the motor as a template. That's that's the best. But you can also look it up. Yeah. Right. Um. <coughs> Motor as template, so so it's important to get the motor parts up. Motors out. There's the pulleys. There's uh, the belt. And once and the rods. Once we have that, we do it. So let's let's get into a cut list. So, um, okay. So is the frame clear? So we're going to use quarter by four by four. We're going to make it nine feet high, so we can actually reach eight feet of print. We're going to do it five feet. In fact, six feet, so we can easily get. So here's another trick I didn't mention about the heated bed. What happens with a heated bed? Uh, let's explain the concept. Just a quick concept. To print, you're talking about like printing lumber straight up. Yeah. Is that can that not become wobbly over? I mean. No, the bed is not moving. No, the bed's not moving, but the head moving on that. Uh, it's not going to be bonded enough, but I just would think once you're hitting that kind of height, that there's some differential in that. And like, I mean, I just think of printing on the small yeah. one and printing those test blocks that are like that tall. And I think yeah, I mean, a piece of lumber, it's going to start getting a little. Just that head pushing around on it is going to be moving it. The difference is that you've got a 2,000 pound gorilla here instead of a 40 pound gorilla. Yeah, I get. I just, so um, I don't know, I've we'll track. see. I've worked with Trex a lot. I've worked with all sorts of plastic lumber, and it's not very. It's not like. It's not solid. stiff, but that's because they don't do honeycomb because yeah. they can't. Yeah. This is better. Yeah, it's easier and to be better. I'm just, I'm just trying to name what potential. Yeah, here's the other thing. Major flaw. Yeah, make little interconnects. You uh -huh. can do like little yeah, bridges. Yeah, you could just print and between. Then, yeah. Yeah, and that would solve it. Oh yeah. And the real promise here is the lightweight uh, honeycomb structures that are insulating and structural and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. um, but let's let's talk about why we have to have a six foot frame for a four foot bed. And in fact, for a heated chamber, you can only get like two feet out of it because you have a closure on top. So how does this mechanism work? It's a very simple system that I don't believe is patentable. Mm -hmm. The way the guys do it, they have funky bellows that telescope bellows, bellows shapes. Mm -hmm which keep the heat in. Ah, cool, but that, I think the patent actually ran out on that kind of technology, but it's also like when I look at it, that's not, uh, this is better, like uh, take a look at what we've got. Uh, idea that is simpler. So high temperature heat enclosure. Uh, you have to picture this because we don't have CAD on it, but 
Okay, so it's your chamber, but what's the mechanism? Uh, this is the only thing I can show you so that you can study here. Um, what's the deal here? So, to the underside of the carriage, all we have is a sheet, something like PEI or polycarbonate, that blocks the top of the chamber. The chamber is completely open on top. All that sticks through the, through the block is your nozzle and your cooling fan. You gotta look at this thing. Um, so the heated chamber, the only things that are in the heated chamber are the bed and the Z-rods. Nothing else. Oh, so Extruders. The, that plate is like mounted to the head. Yeah, it's mounted right to the head and it slides over the top, that's all. Like but the simplest way you can do it, but that's the problem is you need you need space. Yeah, you are going to run into the yeah. the frame of. Like yeah, so so if you have six feet, you're going to get two feet of print bed, mm -hmm. two by two. So without a chamber, you can get four by four. But if we succeeded on this thing, this is extremely valuable. Nobody has done anything close to this. Uh, nobody makes an open source, well, in the open source, in the proprietary world, there's $250,000 printers that do this. But when we do this, you're getting into the realm of absolutely multi $10,000 printers mm -hmm. at the low, low end to quarter million dollar printers at the, at the regular end mm -hmm. of industrial grade printers. But if so the X carriage is moving all the way to the right, then this, this plate is also. So your frame has to be massive. Frame has if, to be bigger than the really print you really want bed. to do a 4x4. Four four, four. You want a 4x4, four four, you have to have a 12x12 12 12 yeah. frame on top. Mm -hmm. Using this technique Doing for this like reason, this, yeah. this is the dumb way to do it, but it's so robust and foolproof. You, all you need is yeah. structure. And you can get structure much more easily than like mechanical bellows and stuff like that, which is more complex. So is that so that's that's more of a reflective sheet because it's not actually like the walls are going to be enclosed, right? Yeah. Um, but you're still going to have like heat gap around the side or like air gap around the side. Yeah, put a gasket, put a little gasket, like a roll <coughs> gasket on it or put the, the welding blanket gasket like so right on top. Are you saying this is like a cloche that comes down over the whole thing? Like, or I'm not quite getting it's a it's a like is the frame insulated on the side this so? is the chamber like that's that's what it is that's your bed and I have the bed here on a single because you gotta lift the Z through it okay so that's um, gotcha that's why I said let's not worry about how we mount that's the x-axis yeah wait is that the x-axis? Yeah, that, that's, okay. sorry, that's not the x-axis, that's the bed mount axis. Mm -hmm. But they, here, it's most convenient to put them vertically, so that's a consideration we have to the take. The bed's going up and down, and the print head, and basically you have a sheet that's just moving yeah. around over the top of that box. Um, yeah. What is the sheet? The bed? No. Yeah. And if you have, for example, that sheet is PEI or polycarbonate. Oh. Basically. So we have four by four polycarbonate sheets we can do, but a four by four polycarbonate. So it's just like yeah. the head would be inside and that's it's it. doing that oh, basically. That's yeah. Okay. Oh, that's an easy way to show it with a hot coffee mug <laughs> at 100 up to 187 C. So your prints are going to have to be pretty balanced as far as. Um, you know, how well, here first of all, we're, this is one axis. This was for a tiny printer. Here we have two, okay, two of those. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. I understand. So that. we're gonna have to do. Th this is a complex yeah, thing. Yeah. Like, that's for tomorrow. I mean, I don't know if we're gonna get the to this. Box, we'll see the after today. This is a basic frame structure. Um, so he actually used angle, yeah, and then sheet in between. The clamshell is simpler, but the two axes is you've got to have at least like two clams with a. A bar in the middle, but then you also need to be able to open and close it super easily, right? Well, yeah. So to what's what's the unloading procedure? Move the print up to the top and take it off. So You've you need got an eight foot tall. <laughs> well, <laughs> isn't that insane? It is insane. So we'll see how it works. But it might be that you have to have a second floor to actually unload your prints. 
unless you design this chamber to be openable, which you can. You can put a big door in there, but we're talking the huge stuff. We're, yeah. This is large, so we'll figure that out later. But I mean, we should think about it now, but there is a clear way to get your prints off, and that is you move the print back to the top and pick it off. So Use an axe. No, no. <laughs> you fell your print with an axe at the end. There's a clear way to do it. So, uh, but, okay, distraction from what we do today, but the chamber, that's why I was explaining why we need a 6x6 six six frame. So, I will do a 6x6 six six frame so we can do... Um, quarter by 4 by 4 angle. So, let's, let's get a cut list. Let's do it. Just do it. So, cut list. Who was there? Yeah, I mean, the, the frame itself, that's, that's you could, a... Um, you could take one side of the uh, frame off, or not the frame, the uh, insulation. Uh-huh. Yeah, you just... Pull one side. Yeah. yeah. You don't yeah. have to have an image. No. You yeah, just go ahead and just, yeah, just pull it up yeah. and out. Yeah. Out. yeah. Sure. Especially as you've got two rail systems that are going up and down, that right. piece in the middle. You don't want to use that, though, because yeah. then you can only pull out uh, a small yeah, portion right, of right, your print. Yeah. So you want it from the end? From the end, yeah. 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 That makes sense. I was thinking. <laughs> from the end? What do you mean? He's talking about the whole clamshell piece. Mm -hmm. Would have to come up somehow. Yeah. 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 Or just one side of it. They have two. They have it in three pieces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just gets more and more complicated and more and more pieces. Okay. More and more pieces. So let's take a look at how this, this will look. So this is quarter by four by four. Angle. Do we have a not nice radial arm store here? Yeah. Sliding miter we have. Okay, so that's that's this one piece here. Because uh, because the build procedure here is important too, so we'll have two pieces like that. So this is on a table. So I'm going to draw a little table. This is going to be our um, our big table, the five foot table. So we'll. Um, you can get nice corners. You can use the table as in your alignment point. So from the top, so this is the, how long are we making? If we're going to make this nine feet tall together, so we're going to need to cut eight foot pieces. Then the, then the top and bottom will add you another four inch. No, no, we're, sorry, nine, nine foot. We, we don't want to do like 10 foot because that's half of a whole stick. But it's like we're going to get into issues of getting that in the workshop. <laughs> so nine feet is how tall it's going to be. Because this is just crazy big. So this is going to be nine feet by six. Okay, so where does this angle on the side end? So, so just think about the construction of it because the build how we build this like you know this is large stuff so what we do what's gonna look like is we're gonna add how are we gonna build this do we are we gonna stand the verticals up like that now we're gonna build the long sides first so build the long sides two flats two flat sides and then we can connect them with verticals right two four how many pieces of metal do we need if we two four six eight ten there's 12 pieces of metal that we need all together uh, what I would suggest is the following four eight twelve this is the suggested procedure do the large side are you muted? first yeah I can hear you because it's e going to be easier to square it up later. So take a look at this. So, so that's the 
Oh wait, there was a question for me? Am I muted? Yeah, yeah, let's unmute here. But we've got the video. Um, that do large sites first so what I mean by that so the final product is going to be with the verticals these are verticals of the angle and the the ones that are at the bottom they're actually laying like this at the bottom so you have to pay attention to like where where do you inset these pieces of metal to make them weldable and stuff like that so uh, this will make sense a little later, so let's let's so think about this. Nine by six like frame front cabinet, view. And okay. then you're gonna create front view to create the cabinet. Uh, slide duplicates. This was actually like welding this on a table. Um, so welding on a table. This is what I was showing here. Welding, you're actually getting on a table and you lay these <coughs> pieces on a table, but you can only lay, this one's gonna hang off because this the table's only five feet wide. So you're gonna lay this one down and we're gonna weld the other one like this here. So there's gonna be a gap there because the very difficult thing about angle is that you've got, you'd have to make bevel cuts, which we don't have to worry about because it takes, it's gonna take too long. So let's just do this procedure so you bevel cuts mean miser cuts yeah like cuts at um like you'd have to cut the angle at an at an angle of 45, yeah, 45. like all those and like all those it's like and you're just saying so do a, lot a butt of pain. cut but yeah then butt cut, cut off. do a butt cut so you can just tack it on and yeah. then just scab it together it's now but from the top it's a butt cut and not only that you're connecting just at the little corners so let's look at the this is what we're gonna do um, I would say this is um, this is what it looks like from the top well, so from the top and put it on the big screen it is because no, I'm not sure if it's on my side or not does someone else have their uh, HMI uh, laptop on a zoom just a um, yeah top view so from the top view when we're welding on a table all we're gonna do is this is this right here so actually this is gonna be the long way like this we're gonna just weld the corners together bam Why? So that we, we make two of these. So what do we do here for these corners? Just weld it with rebar. Little two sti sticks of rebar. We need to, we're tacking the entire structure first. We'll finish weld it later. So right here, we'll go with, uh, actually it would be useful to, we can do a square because, no, let's do square, square. Square is better because that will allow, you, allow us to close up that seam with a final weld later. Yeah. So let's do a little square, like a, uh, you know, weld a square there. So this is looking from the top, the, the edges are facing up. This is laying flat on the table. So if you wanna actually... You can just use a cut of angle iron. Uh, hold on. Let's let's show why not. I don't think I don't think it would be as good. But um, so that so that's the flange, like here. That's the flange of the iron. That you're looking from the top. Right. Okay. It's okay. Like okay. Box from above. Yeah. Okay. We're looking at from above. So that's the flange of that angle iron. Set that square on the inside of it and then that so that's the flange so I'm going to copy that here just yeah it's top view
you've got that. Then you've got this extended. So instead of that one, you've got this. Those squares that you've made are oversized in the moment, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Because then you wouldn't want them hanging into the. Yeah. Into the open. Yeah. Uh, we can do like make them very tiny oversized well just make them if you do them even like four by four four by four squares so cut it out of four by stock that would work yeah, well, because the then you've got the width of the angle right or the, of the flange yeah like this much you don't want this you want to weld that so then we're going to put the verticals there but this is what we this is what we do and we do this build this twice so this kind of structure let's clean it up a little bit um, and these this means you do cut you do little cuts you, you do these squares you can weld this up in a second uh, i.e. like in an hour we should be done with both sides both sides and then wait wrong one I want this one and that one so you make this this two times and what we'll do then is put the verticals in between that would that suffice yeah that's eight sides we, we built two of these the only thing that I'm, um, I understood you were saying we're going to build the side panels first. These are the side panels. The, okay. The sides, so not the top the and bottom. Top view of the side panel. Yes. The top, top view, view of, of the whole thing. Gotcha. Side that's, panel. That's good uh -huh. And these are so this is four by nine. No, this is six by this. Okay, let's do dimensions here. This is six by nine. Yeah. That dimension is six. And the other dimension? Nine. So what's the cut list? Can somebody generate the cut list on slide number one? Four sixes. Six minus eight. Six minus eight inches. Oh minus two. And and nine feet minus eight inches. So the sides are that, right? The members are eight inches shorter. Can somebody do that? So that's six feet there. So that means that the cuts are not six feet or nine feet, they're shorter. Okay. Uh, by eight inches. Um, you build two of these, then you can you have your four other members, and how long are the other members going to be? Um, they're going to be another six foot minus eight inches. These ones are going to be six. Look at your corners. <coughs> okay, because you're going all the way. To We're going all the way down. So the actual other ones. On top of that, gotcha. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so cut list would be eight foot four inch. So how many of those? Cut list. Um, hmm. How many of those? Um, eight foot fours. Five foot four inch, four, yeah. and then four, 
six foot, right? They add up to 12. I know from deep involvement in these frames that they have 12 members. Or six members if you make CNC cut them as flats. <coughs> that, yeah, 12. It adds up. So that's what we got to do. That we can cut on an iron worker, the angle shear. That is perfect. Just perfect. Now, what do we do? Ex what exactly are we doing for the the little corners. So let's make those. Well, we'll uh, we should have some quarter by four. Uh, if not, use like quarter by six or something. Like, and it'll we might trim out that little. That little corner is not going to ma matter too much. So just if we don't have four by four, do like six uh, quarter by six by six plate. Um, uh, how many of those? There's going to be eight of those. So add that to the cut list. Mm, quarter inch by iron worker. We have that. Or six inch. Must have some of that. So a cut list. Eight. Um, quarter inch by four inch by four inch flat, ideally. Okay. Now, uh, what about rods? How how long are the rods? Yeah. So actually nine feet or do they want to be I'd say yeah, nine. Or what? Because they're not No, well they're gonna be slightly. The solid right? so Z rods, so solid rod. There's okay. solid rod and hollow rod. Um for solid rod, what do we got? Solid rod or nine feet minus maybe because we want them to go all the way through these the uh, yeah, let's have them rest on the ground. Okay. Just rest on the ground. Nine foot. Eight, nine foot. Uh, that's it. Let's do the rest hollow because that's the big ones. We'll make that. So hollow rod. Could one. Oh, hollow rod. No cut could, list. Could. Oh yeah. No cuts. And you can't get the hollow in the nine in the nine foot. No, they anywhere. come up to up to six foot. I was gonna say if you could. You could do one solid and one hollow, just to cut that. Like you get the strength from the solid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we don't. But we don't. So. So yeah. how? But how many of them do we need anyway? That's pick list. Four. Six for the six. Four for the hollow, right? Yeah. Four. Yeah. Four. That's going to be the y-axis. Now, what about the? Yeah, we have to think a little bit about what the. There's eight. Four. Yeah, well, this would be four for the y axis. Four, six foot. So the y's. Yep. Yeah. Roll division. Yeah. Tasks, frame. You, you're a carpentry. You got that team. Who wants to be a carpentry team? Me. Not me. You don't want to do it? No, I could. Yeah. I think you're like the only guy here that can do it. Mm. I'll so. do it. No, no. Yeah. You must. I, I have five inch skills, but um, I was actually looking at the uh, a little bit of welding. Um, I have some experience with that. I was thinking about taking the bed. Taking that's the bed? Yeah. Well, let's not worry about the bed yet. Or do we want to worry about the bed now because we're bottlenecked for roll? So, so one is the cutting. Um, you cut my, list. <laughs> um, angle that's quick on a iron worker. Um, that someone could jump in there right now. But after that, it's like, oh man, the welding. Welding requires two people. Um, 
if we work on a table, two people pretty much can weld like opposite sides. Wait. Now we don't have. We can do it on a floor too, and you can have another team of two, four. so four. But then you have to cross measure it because you don't have the table to align mm -hmm. two. But anyway, we're, we're, since the table is not big enough, well, we're gonna have to cross measure it to align because we're just tacking the corners first. Just in this side. That's we, it. We found replacement photo sensitive photo cells up here. Yeah. It seems like it would be very smart. Um, are those working? Do they work? Uh, the replacements? Yes. I don't know. They're, they're, uh, yeah. they're in sealed bags and look brand new. Okay. So imagine they do. Yeah. Uh, if they work, then that would be good. Um, now four, do we, we don't think we have four good masks? I have a mask. We're done with all of them? Yeah. I have one in Do we have three good ones? Um, I am not super confident on them all, because they like kind of kick in sometimes, not all the time. No. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I don't know if people are tracking it enough, and if they're not, they're damaging themselves. So, um, understand the thing about darkening, like if it does not clearly, visibly darken to a very comfortable point, uh, that means the thing is not working. You might, like, if you weld and it does not darken, I mean, it protects very little, but that's not good enough that you have to have that darken on you. So quit if you see it not darkening. Mm -hmm. Can a person, can any one of you tell when it's darkened and not? Yeah. Can all of you tell that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I've never, yeah, no. I mean, well, okay, so before you do that, we have I was to make sure we I noticing teach some you. of them will turn on if you get in super close, but when you're in that close, you're getting a lot of reflective light back up in, you know. Yeah. That's called the reverse redneck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you can also feel it hitting your eyes, like... Mm. First that it's dark and then it's yeah. Okay, well, mm -hmm. um, so make sure the masks are working and we have whoever does that. Uh, there could be up to four people, but a lot of that could be just layup and one person welds. So it could be yeah. still four people. One is an assistant and the other one is the welding guy. Um, beyond that, so rods, I mean, man. Um, there's a 3D printing team, printing team that's that needs to happen. Yeah. So let's take a look at what we've got to get on the same page on that. So here's the CAD files. Um, so we've got these, but let's um, let's migrate to 3.5. Maybe I have like a tiny bit more adjustment on like setting up my bed stuff on my printer um, before it's going to print. Properly. Like what? Um, I just moved something and now it's not printing quite right. You did? So that just makes Did you read it? I think you, uh, you still print it right away then. No, uh, I yes. moved something in it. Five it was, you no, you I moved it substantially by accident. <laughs> moved what? Um, I was trying to reset the bed and, mm -hmm. and then it started catching when it was printing and not. I don't know. I tested all of them. They, they didn't catch for me last night, but... You did last night? Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Works great. Okay. It's not attached properly at the moment. By the way, I took after your hint of the, the post. No. It's quite true. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's take a look at rod test file with bushing. So let's print all these things. So what are these things? One inch rod test with bushing. So th this is basically where you've got. Is it updating there? So it's opening this one up. Um, so that's the one that has the. I did 0 0.675, which makes it 1.35 for the diameter. That's just a test. This would fit. You want to do 1.25 because you the tools will fit the bushing which is 1.25 here we overdid it so it because it has a little bit more narrow actual hole that's printed so that's this test print we should make sure that that fits so that's one inch rod test 
I actually got the SDL here already, so you can. I actually got it on an SD card, so you can do this. I got all these on SD without bushing, so actually you might want to copy these because because I mean we can run. They take like 20 minutes each, but there's all those files are here as G codes. One inch rod test, no bushing. What's that mean? That means just the, the hole with one inch, and here I did 1.0, uh, 1. Point what happened here? Is that the right one? Oh yeah, that's the right one. No. Oh wait, what's it? What's it say? Um, yeah, I think that's that's the one. If you measure it. Um, but it's labeled wrong but it's actually the right one so that should be like 1.1 so in other words adding one tenth which is uh, that should get it right to have a rod fit what if uh, it's a little loose well check this out if it's laying on the ground that's loose is good because it's laying on the ground and then at the top it's just held by altogether it's held by gravity with the concrete on the ground so if it's a little too big that's okay that's for um, yeah for the z-axis um, that is good for the x and y's we wanna uh, how do we clamp those down and end clamps like uh, what Ken did so let's see Large printer. So what you notice here is those. Um, do you have the end cap file? Or so if we've got these holes for the bushings or for rods, if we close that hole, that's your fix. The equivalent of a clamp bolt on the y-axis. For the z-axis, it doesn't matter. It's held by gravity and it's heavy enough, it won't move anywhere. Here, to if you want to cap that so the rod doesn't slide out, because if the if the carriage is moving, and this is a carriage, well, sorry, this is this is a carriage, so this is this you're just clamping down the bearings, the bushings, so they don't don't fall out. So it's a it's a cap with a diameter slightly larger than one inch, but smaller than 1.25 inch. Uh, so for what's more, that's idler, for the idler piece, here we would be actually uh, closing off the end so the rod doesn't fall out. If you, you yeah, understand? Like yeah. Uh, just instead just of uh, clamp bolts. Yeah. So that's good. That'll work. But we should redraw them. I'm not sure about the exact dimensions of these. How close to 3.5 inches are we? on some of these files because we said for Ben we're going to do 3.5 well so let's look at one of these and see exactly what we have so if we download this so for like carriage alright so that's Oh, that's the carriage. Is that here? No, it's... Where did that go? Space. Oh, let's just open it up from here again. Um, Don't. Oh, maybe I uploaded the wrong file. Um, but this spacing between the holes should be identical everywhere here. Let's see. 
So what's the key is what is the distance between these two centers? We said it's 3.5. Uh, do we have... Uh, so let's see if how close to 3.5 that is. Um, So I'm going to select that point and this point and then it says 3.53. Ooh, very close. Um, 3.53 inches. Three hundredths of an inch. Can we, we could just print this out maybe, do we think? Yeah, yeah. That's only three hundredths, whereas the oversize we're doing is 0.1. We should just try this. Let's start printing these. That seems That's good enough. Yeah. Um, so who wants to be the print team? You going to wild I have, there? Very, I have very little experience with 3D printing. Um, I have a bit of experience with carpentry um, and uh, a little bit of experience with uh, welding. So just, I can pretty much work mm -hmm. in those two areas easily. Okay. So carpentry, 3D printing, and, and frames. What's the role division? Happy to do carpentry. Yeah, we're to do carpentry. Yeah. Yep. Okay, three. Frame. Frame. What I need another guy. At least power for me. Okay, I'm doing the frame. Mm -hmm. Me, and you. Yeah, we can parallel. So if we parallel, yeah. How about do that and 3D printing? 3D printing? I can help print them. Yeah, I don't wanna. I feel a little decent. Okay, okay, maybe. Yeah, rest, rest. Uh, so can. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like we've got a team. We're a little sparse. Yeah, no, 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 um, I'm not running 100% today. Yeah, yeah we're not He was kind of following via Zoom, I believe. So I said. I had a question about, so right now we are starting month two of intense fury of stuff. And I, I, would, I would say we actually take weekends off. How yes, do people feel definitely. about that? <laughs> definitely, says Ken. But like Saturday and Sunday? Right. Yeah. I only got a week left, so I mean, what will that do to starting the, um, the 3D, uh, I mean the uh, metal kind of hurt? I think maybe Sunday. Okay, so start by taking Sundays off, which is decent, and Saturdays go all out, or have a lighter day, or start. Day, I would say. So half day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can always you can always have side project going. Yeah, I was gonna say there's always stuff to if you've got the mojo to do it. Mm. Well, there's plenty of stuff to do, yeah, but people have depending on how long people are here. Like I was happy to work every every day. I was here because I'm only here for a week. Um, but I, you know, people are here for three months. It's a little bit mm -hmm. different. Yeah, but I think uh, we are like let's try to work as much as possible. And there are still unfinished things like the tractor, for example. I don't know when we will finish that. Um, then the aquaponics. I think we have to do. Yeah, there's plenty of backlog that you can tackle it. Oh, there's plenty of backlog if we want to do that. Um, now, actually, what we do want to do is dismantle the house because that's not going to get dismantled otherwise. Uh, that's a thing I would propose, like one of the first things we do, because we're pretty much done with that as far as what we wanted to show. We have all the modules, so if we want to, like, for example, outstanding things like siding, we can take, you know, put up a couple of modules and, and work on the siding, but we don't have to have the whole house. It's more important to get it out of the rain right now because it's just out in the rain. So that will be one of the first things. Let's see. Um, okay, so Sunday. Um, we can dismantle it on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, Rashard, how about you? Does that sound okay with you or not really? Um, 
What? What's this? Today's what? Thursday? Friday? Friday. 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 Well, Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Like, as in tomorrow? You're talking about? I was actually looking week after. This week. This week we kind of. Yeah. We have to go. We have to go. So we're talking about more like the ninth, ninth and tenth. So. Um, Maybe we could take off. What day are you leaving? I leave the side of the morning on Saturday. So oh, that works perfect. Oh, perfect. So maybe we take we go full week this week and take off Saturday, Sunday next time. Yeah. Yep. Everyone good with that? Or half team, right? Yeah. Hmm? Half or seven days. Yeah, or maybe half. Yeah. Then that gives me a chance to do my go my thirtieth high school reunion. <laughs> <laughs> to go back to high school yeah, that weekend. Sweet. <laughs> so you're going to track, right? <laughs> I'll rumble into that fancy dinner joint on, <laughs> on my tractor. <laughs> Change the world. Change the world. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Sounds good. So we'll take it, uh, yeah, we'll go uh, all out. And this is exciting. I mean, man, if we can get any of this done, this is very, very powerful. So let's see how, how far we can get. And the frame, I want to get this thing done by lunchtime. It's a lunch. 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 It's a lun